Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today we're going to be going over two example problems. So we're going to be going, going, to be going over Punnett squares. So how we set up Punnett squares, how we do Punnett squares, read them, and then answer questions related to them. And then we're also going to take it one step further. I'm going to show you about the branching diagrams, which make it so you never have to do a Punnett square outside of a monohybrid cross ever again. All right, let's get into this and show you the tricks. So here, again, this is all based on Mendelian genetics. You can't really do these Punnett squares properly if it's not Mendelian. So all this, you know, one character comes in two traits. That's the ideal situation here. You can still do Punnett squares for the other ones, of course. It just might not give you the full picture. Alrighty, so looking at this one here, again, Punnett square is a predictive tool. So last chapter when we were talking about that three to one ratio, that's a prediction. So if you had four offspring, you'd expect three to be a certain trait and one to be the other trait. Is that how it's actually going to be? Maybe, maybe not. You might get like a 3.1, 2.9 ratio, which is roughly three. So in the next video, we will then go over how we determine if that slight difference of observed differs too much from expected. It's called a chi-square analysis. So how we set up a Punnett square here. Uh, so the outside, each row. So remember, you know, if we're just drawing a monohybrid cross, we have our square right there. Uh, let's just say, you know, we have, this is our cross right here, you know, typical cross. So possible N gametes from one parent in each column. So right here, each of these are written as 2N. So you got to remember, gametes form from each of these as A and A. Well, you know, dominant and recessive, same for this one up here. So when you write these rows, you write them as N, not 2N. And that's really important to remember. Um, so possible N gametes of each parent. That's what this representation is. It's a representation of the actual gametes. Uh, so if, if you're looking at this then, so inside box then is 2N. So now you combine them. So you combine each gamete here. Again, uh, get in the habit of writing the dominant one first. It makes it easier to read. So inside then we have 2N. And that's, you know, you're mimicking fertilization events, possible combinations, predicting random chance. Think of these as a pair of, you know, two die. One has A on one side or a coin, A on one, little A on the other. You flip it. That's the one you get. You flip it again. That's the one you get. And those, that's your combination. That's how it works. That's why these Punnett squares and you know all this Mendelian genetics becomes probability and statistics. So the best way to learn all this isn't by you know going through lectures. And that's why I didn't do this last chapter, uh, well, last video where we did the lecture on this. Now we can you know lecture on the example, going over one and writing it out. So made up a you know example here and this is you know the sorts of things you'll find on exams what and what not so in kelpies the allele for green scales is dominant to that of turquoise scales so start defining things in your problem right away as a tip for doing these so the allele for green scales is dominant to turquoise scales so scale color is the character coming in two traits green and turquoise you want to choose a similar letter to define these similar notation so let's choose green uh, G for green scales. So either the homozygous dominant or heterozygous leads to green scales. Is dominant to turquoise scale. So turquoise is recessive. Don't make the mistake of writing T for turquoise. You want to use, so G defines this character. So homozygous recessive, lowercase g, lowercase g defines turquoise, not T. Don't screw yourself up by doing that. And the allele for rounded flippers, so we're looking at two characters now. Second character is flipper shape. So the allele for round flippers is dominant to pointed. So let's use R, so homozygous dominant or heterozygous for round. And then pointed would be the recessive form or lowercase r, lowercase r. The genes for these two characters are located on separate chromosomes. We'll find out in future chapters why that's important because we know they separate independently from it, each other. And you manage a colony of Kelpies at Diagon Alley Aquarium. Let's just throw in a Harry Potter reference while we're here. So now here's the first question. So there are two questions to this one. And then, so if a green heterozygote, so green heterozygote, so you go up and this is why you, you know defining everything up there makes it a lot easier to answer the questions then. So green heterozygote, we know is that male don't worry about the sex 
yet is crossed with a turquoise female. Boom, boom. You look how easy that was. What are the expected genotypic and phenotypic ratios of their offspring? So we'll get to answering the question at the end, of course, but you want to look at that to make sure you're going to fill in everything properly. Uh, so now, always write out your cross. This will always get you points. So this is your cross, at least in my courses. And now write out your gamete. So again, that's your gamete separation. Pretty easy for we're looking at a monohybrid cross. We're not looking at the flippers yet. Um, so these are all the possible gametes. Remember, now you can have random combinations of all these. So how do we write this out? We do a monohybrid cross here. So N gametes on you know, top and bottom. You fill in your square. And then fill in the zygotes. So always write the dominant first. And then here's our result. So, you know, pretty basic and simple, straightforward right here. So first question is, what are the expected genotypic ratios? So genotypic defines the different alleles. So one combination I find here are two heterozygotes. So two of those, and then two recessive ones. So genotypic ratio, you then use the least common factor here. So a one-to-one -one genotypic ratio. And for the genotypic ratio, sometimes you just uh, write in parentheses nearby of what each genotype is as well. And then the phenotype ratio, phenotypic ratio is what you see. So what's the phenotype? So here we have two green and two turquoise. I'll just write Turk for turquoise. So this is the recessive one. So this is also a one-to-one -one ratio. So this one happens to be the genotypic ratio is equal to the phenotypic ratio. That's not always the case. All right, so that's the first one. That's a you know, simple monohybrid cross right there. So now, if a male heterozygous for color and flipper shape. So for color and flipper shape. So flipper shape we defined with R. And it's heterozygous. Crossed with a female that is turquoise. See how easy it is once you define your variables? And heterozygous for flipper shape. So another heterozygous. What is the likelihood that they will have a pup with green scales? So green scales, we draw the underscore because that could be either a dominant or recessive and pointed flippers. That's the recessive version. So this is the combination that we're looking for. So how many of the total outcome was the likelihood of we get that. So write your cross out like always. And now you fill in your Punnett square. Remember when you do your Punnett square, you separate the possible gametes and you want you want to use that foil method if you remember it. So first outsides, insides, last. You do that for each one. So the top row would look like this right here. I'll I'll write it out real fast. Then write the other parent going across the top and then fill in your square. All right, so here's our square. And then you just fill this in like you know, you're making the two n. So remember, these are all n, and inside the squares are two n. Uh, so here you add the alleles, pretending a fertilization event occurred between these two. And you just go you know, across the whole table. As you see, these dihybrid crosses can take a while to fill in. But keep your letters together and write the dominant one first if there is. All right, so I'm going to finish filling this in real quick. Okay, and we are filled in. Now it's time to analyze the results. But before that, one thing I wanted to mention here. And this is a tip for when you're completing these in the future. Look at your combinations. Here, two of these combinations are the same. And then these two are the same. So if you see two gametes that are the same, you don't have to do that row. It's going to be the same as this row. And then you don't have to do this one as well. So this row, well, this column, not row, is exactly the same as this one. So you don't need to do it again because when you express your ratios, you do it as the least common factor. So if you know your ratio is 2 16th, you express that as 1 8th. So keep that in mind that you can save yourself time making these Punnett squares if you notice that some of these combinations are the same. None of these on these this side over here are the same. Oop, I wrote this one wrong. Oh my gosh, that's been there a while. 
I wrote that one wrong. <laughs> None of these on this column are the same. And that means all of these are wrong in here. Da, 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 boom. So these are all small r. See what happens if you screw it up once? All right, so there is the correct order for that. I bet some of you were sitting there yelling about that the whole time, but I did notice it eventually. Um, so yeah, if you do notice some of these uh, gamete combinations are the same, you can go in and correct them as well. Uh, so as you can cross out the rows here and not have to do them. Now let's look at our question. So this is the combination that we're looking for. So first let's look for homozygous um, recessive. And let's you know, get a different color here. Oh, here's one. And here's one. I see two. So we're looking for a little r, little r right there. Now, which one of these are green? So for the green ones, this one would be green. This one would be turquoise. So this one down here would not be green. So we only have one eighth of all the possibilities here. So for green and pointed, so one eighth green pointed. So these are all G underscore R R. So there, there's your answer. That's the likelihood of one eighth chance that you can have a pop with green scales and pointed flippers. Again, apologies for writing the wrong one there. So now let's look at this using branch diagrams. So doing these isn't fun at least in, in my, some people might think they're fun puzzles, but filling in all the gametes, you can easily make a mistake like I did right there. So there, oh, this is a learning experience. So you could easily make that mistake and it screws up all your results. Um, so you can see what that would do to the results. Now let's imagine, you know, we had this combination and this was the cross I gave you. If you would do a tri-hybrid Punnett square, so this is 16. This one, based on the gametes you could form here, this one would end up being 64 squares, each with three characters and, or six letters in each square. You do not want to do a 64 square Punnett square. And that's why we have this thing called branch diagram. So this only works if genes sort independently. And the question would say whether or not it does to help define it for you. And the way you do this is that you set up monohybrid crosses. Uh, so using the same above example here, let's write our cross again, since I don't have to scroll up and down. So this is our original cross. So now we can do this same question, but using branching. So you do two monohybrid crosses here, and then, and you just, of each character. So two monohybrid crosses of each character, you'll eventually be able to do these monohybrids um, without even really having to draw them out, but I'm drawing them out for you. So there is the first one. And eventually you'll see these heterozygous ones. You're always gonna know these are three to one. Again, so you're not gonna be able, you know, you're not gonna, you know, mess with filling those out. So let's look at our combinations here. Combinations for this one are, you know, half green. So only worry about phenotype here. Half green, half Turk, turquoise. And then here, remember we have pointed and round where round is dominant. So in this one, we have three out of four are round. One out of four is pointed. So the way these branch diagrams work is we branch it like this. So you get half green, you can have a green pointed or you can have a green round. You can have a turquoise round or a turquoise pointed. So we write that out, you know, branch diagram style. So out here, write half green. And then that could either be three quarter round or one quarter pointed. Then the other combination is half turquoise. And then same combination here, three quarter round, one quarter pointed. So now what? Now you multiply. So to figure out these branch diagrams, this now equals one half times three fourths. This one is one half times three fourths. 
times one fourth, then one half times one fourth. So filling it all in down here. So now you multiply those together and that'll give you your answers. So remember multiplying a numerator denominator, we have three eighths, one eighth, three eighth, one eighth. And now these are the combinations. So this one, these ones are green, round, green pointed, turquoise round, and turquoise pointed. So if you look at this Punnett square we made, you have the same combination here. In my mind, this was a lot easier than accidentally screwing up a letter in the Punnett square. It's harder to screw up a monohybrid cross. So these are the same results. So if we go back and look at the original question here, it asks, was the likelihood they have a pup with green scales pointed flippers? All you have to do then is read the results, green scales pointed flippers, boom. Draw a box around it. Right there is your answer. So it really simplifies it down. Also, you only have to do one line. So if you look at the question and I ask, what's the likelihood of green scales and pointed flippers, you can immediately be like, oh, one half green, one quarter pointed, one eighth. See how easy that was? So you don't have you don't even have to do the rest of these. Now the question might be a little bit more complex, and I might ask a little bit more on this, uh, but you can uh, see the point where you can really really simplify it. But that's all I have for today. So next video, the last video in this chapter, I'm going to be going over a little bit more math for probability and statistics, the, the a multiplication and addition rule. So what if I ask, what is the chance of having green pointed or turquoise round? How do you express that? Or what is the chance of having green pointed and turquoise round? So we use you know dice to explain this and also we'll look at the chi-squared analysis and different combinations. Um, so, out of if you have five offspring and what's the uh, chance that three are green and pointed so we'll look at some of that math involved and another important part of this chapter so now we're getting into probability statistics and all that fun stuff but that's all i have for this one today if you have any questions definitely reach out and let me know and remember there will be example problems for going over punnett squares and branching diagrams coming up too i just wanted to spend a little bit more detail about how to set it up and so forth in this video but that's all hope you have all a great day and bye bye mm -hmm.